The following is a presentation of KSL Sports. First and 12. A total roundup of BYU and Utah football at the expanded Big 12 Conference. Brought to you by Macy's Grocery Stores. Your hosts are Mitch Harper and Alex Keery on KSL News Radio and the KSL Sports Zone. Good morning, everyone. Welcome on in to First and 12. Man, these weeks in the Big 12 Conference, it's the craziest league in college football. <laughs> and I know the, the national narrative out there is, oh, this is a one-bid playoff league. But here, we're here to dispel that and break down the nuts and bolts of this conference and kind of highlight, you know, the strengths but also some weaknesses in this league. And Mitch Harper, Alex Carey, every single week with you here on KSL News Radio and the KSL Sports Zone. We'll break down the Utah TCU game, BYU's historic, memorable finish against Oklahoma State. A lot to unpack today, Alex. Yeah, there's a ton, and we have a, a lot to break into. And Listen, the godfather Nick Saban already spoke. There's only one bid in this league, and then the rest of the country <laughs> is going to be like, he has spoken it, he has said it, and now we have to live by it. Yeah, I don't know. I, this league gives you – it's all sorts of weirdness, uh, you know, all season long, and uh, this weekend was no different. We were a couple of finishes away from this thing totally being blown up, but let's start everything off here. By the way, our show, as always, brought to you by Macy's Happy Shopping. Every week, bringing you the program, the freshest fruits and vegetables from your local growers and the best local brands, Macy's Happy Shopping. Mitch, let's jump into that BYU football game and that breakdown from the Friday night that was uh, one of the latest ones to try to get out of Provo that you've ever seen. Everybody stayed till the last <laughs> second, and no wonder. Let's get to that BYU game breakdown here. The BYU Breakdown. Cougs get it done, 38-35. to 35. And, look, if you're out there listening and thinking, oh, BYU wasn't going to pull it off, you didn't believe, hey, I was with you. I, I thought there's no <laughs> chance because, honestly, Alex, you know, BYU teams under Kalani – they don't win late. You know, think about Coastal Carolina, uh, Toledo back in 2019. That, that was with an NFL quarterback in, in Zach Wilson. And BYU just never could finish the job. And, and this group of Jake Retzloff, this team with the 1984 squad watching, man, what a memorable night and a memorable moment for this team that has a little bit of magic brewing this season. Yeah, you know, uh, and I'll add to it, too, that you just it's not just about whether or not Kalani and his guys could get it done. It was also about Jake Retzlaff. Like, I mean, I think a lot of people looked at it and went, look, we saw enough of, and I say it week in, week out, you've got good Jake and bad Jake. We saw bad Jake in the first half. We saw good Jake in the second half. The thing was is could a team like BYU who has been winning these games in weird ways and everything, but they really haven't had close necessarily. I guess the SMU game was close, but it, it was also the defense that locked it up. You know what I mean? And so sure. this was what made it different it, it, is that the the defense – struggled and the offense bailed out the defense that's something we hadn't seen all year and it's something that Jake Retzlaff I think is is doing in this growing up process however it is for him to be able to to get to the point where he is becoming you know this guy the guy now and nobody's you know really looking around going where's Gary Bohannon uh, I think the, those things have kind of gone to rest I mean I say kind of and you know things can turn on a dime but BYU 7-0 and they come back in one of the most exciting fashions that we've seen in a long long time uh, at, at the end of a game like that I mean the reality is is that from a from a number standpoint, I, no team can really go down in, in a minute and 13 seconds to go 75 yards uh, to be able to win that game. It, 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 it's really, really hard against, you know, a really, really good team against a, a really, really bad team. And by the way, Oklahoma State, of course, this is the game they decide to show up the entire season. This was their best performance of the entire year. I think that uh, Coach Mike Gundy sort of said that after the game. But uh, Jake Retzlaff was – 50% right on the, on, the, on, the, on the nose on the completion percentage, 218 yards, but he had the two touchdowns. But he had zero touchdowns in the first half and the two picks, and then he had the two touchdowns and the no picks. Again, the good Jake Badgett. We've seen that before, but again, the big, the big story for me on the offense for BYU, the last drive was awesome, but L.J. Martin is your guy, and that's the guy you stick with for the entirety of this season, and that's the guy you ride out on that run game because, frankly, Mitch, the run game showed up and – I think for BYU fans, hopefully it never goes away for a while while LJ Martin is there. Healthy as he's been since spring football before he suffered the shoulder injury. And I think what's exciting for BYU going forward is that despite all the injuries he's you know dealt with, the shoulder, the ankle, 
He didn't have, you know, hits where he was taking a lot of tackles from opposing defenses. So it almost felt like he was a, a fresh body out there getting ready for the second half of the season. Same with Hinkley Ropati, who had a nice game, averaging 7.8 yards per carry. But, yes, he, L.J. Martin, you know, 20 carries, a career-high 120 rushing yards, two touchdowns. He was great in the receiving game, too. You know, he, he's going to be someone – uh, you know, well, he was a factor in the receiving game, excuse me. But the thing is, is that he's shown the versatility where he can do a lot of make yes. a lot of damage happen for BYU in this offense. And Martin's going to be a, a special player for BYU. And what was impressive, too, was it was on a night where Ollie Gordon was his Doak Walker award winning yep. self. Yep. And L.J. Martin's star shined just as bright as Ollie Gordon, who left the game early multiple times right. due to I- injury. And it was kind of interesting, too. Uh, on Saturday, the running back coach for Oklahoma State, he kind of posted a cryptic you know, tweet on, on X with uh, hugging Ollie Gordon and kind of leading people to wonder what's going to happen with the future of Ollie Gordon there in Stillwater. But, uh, yeah, great performance by LJ and a great performance by Retzloff because, uh, you know, he's always said he loves the two-minute drill. I remember when he arrived on campus, he said that was one of his favorite parts of practice. And, that shined, uh, you know, uh, late in the game, minute 13 to go, and it's a moment that will live in BYU lore forever. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it helps, too, that – well, and, again, this is this is kind of a, a an accessory to the, to the whole conversation, but the reality is is that that in-game and that in-stadium experience for BYU has never been better. In the entire time that we've covered this team, Mitch, and that I've covered this team, I've never seen that place, that electric, not just on that play, yeah. but – for the entirety of this season so far, and it helps that they're undefeated, right? But BYU shows up tonight, or I guess it was uh, two nights ago on the, uh, uh, you know, on that Friday night. Shows up that night for two, 473 yards of offense. But how about 255 on the ground? And I know that they gave up almost – they gave up 270 on the ground to Oklahoma State. But, again, uh, this was the game that Ollie Gordon showed up and showed out, and he was a warrior. He had 80 yards rushing in the first half on eight carries, I think. I mean, that 50-yard breakoff that he had looked exactly like the guy that we saw. BYU hadn't allowed a 50-yard play all season. They did. They gave up two in the first half. They gave up, they gave up two massive rushing. Uh, you know, I, I think Rangel must have gotten hurt on that last one. I didn't really see what the what the finish was on that, but he must have gotten run down and, and hurt on that one. That's why you saw uh, the great Alan Bowman come in the game uh, for Oklahoma State afterward. But – it was it was it was just one of those games for BYU where you go okay another weird way for them to win. I didn't have on the on the bingo card that they'd go for 260 yards on the ground, and that uh, Jake Retzlaff would have 80 of those, and that LJ Martin would t- get 20 carries. Like we were hoping for a moment where BYU would have a 20 carry back, and uh, that was it for BYU, and that was the the breakout for them. But more importantly, if you're gonna, it's interesting you pointed out the 84 season. I'm I'm not one of those that goes. Well, this is going to be a special season. That's why the 84 team was there. But uh, they did show the 84 highlights in the stadium of that national championship year. And and guess what the first thing that they showed was? Kyle Morrell jumping over the line to make that stop at Hawaii. You know why? Because there are games like this in big-time seasons. You have to win close games every once in a while. This team learned a lot about how to win a close game, at least. You know who? And, and you know you should be scared to death about going to uh, to uh, Orlando this next weekend just because it's it's such a weird trip and and UCF is starting to figure some things out. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, awesome awesome night for BYU because they get the they get to seven and zero. They get to four and zero in conference play. And weirdly enough, Oklahoma State is zero and four in conference, and they're losers of now four straight. It's not the Oklahoma State team that we we thought we were going to see before the season started. It, it's not, and, and and it wasn't the BYU defense we've seen all season. And, right. You know, BYU's 4-0, and you got to think Jay Hill is going to get after his guys uh, this week because that 17-play drive from Oklahoma State, you thought, oh, man, it, 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 it was – it was almost a good thing that freshman Tommy Parasis missed the tackle on Presley and allowed him to go into the end zone because that would have killed more time had he made yep. the tackle. Mm-hmm. It worked out in retrospect, but, but you know, huge win, huge moment for BYU. Darius Laster, you know, it, it's kind of forgotten the opening play of the game. He has a 50-yard reception from Retzlaff, and you thought, man, BYU's just flying high. They can do no wrong this season. They face adversity. They bounce back, and you got to win in a variety of ways. We've seen kind of the blueprint in the Big 12 that you're going to have these close calls. Any championship team, you're going to have these moments. And look, 
we're, in college football this year, we're seeing across the board, there are so many teams, pretty much everyone has their flaws. Even last night, we're seeing Texas at times bench Quinn Ewers going to Arch Manning, and they're getting thumped at home uh, on the 40 acres to Georgia. And Georgia's really good. But every team, I think on any given Saturday, we're seeing more and more in this sport mm-hmm. where what you did the last three weeks just doesn't matter. And especially after facing an Oklahoma State team with Mike Gundy, who had a bye week, that matters for someone like Gundy, who's just a brilliant X's and O's coach. They were prepared. You got Oklahoma State's best shot. You look like the Oklahoma State team that you thought was preseason top three. BYU mm-hmm. took that hit and still won the football game. That's a big win for BYU. I still don't look at Oklahoma State going forward as a team that's probably going bowling. I think their season's going to really yeah. nosedive because Bowman's got nine lives. That guy cannot avoid the QB, the starting quarterback spot, and Jeez. that fan base is probably going nuts. But it's a huge moment for BYU, and and really now you start to get more national attention and and really narrative shaping that you're one of the the real title contenders, maybe nationally at least in the playoff hunt to be in that playoff conversation as more than just a conference champion, but maybe an at-large team too. Well, we'll take our first break here. We'll come back. Let's break down some of the sound from the University of Utah from this weekend as well. We're going to jump into the locker room on that Uh, And we're going to get to so much more on this program. Stay right here with us. More to go right around the corner. It is your first and 12th program. Alex Keery, Mitch Harper, 97.5 DKSL Sports Zone and KSL News Radio.